Hey, what's up, everybody? Good to see you here on this lovely Wednesday afternoon. It is a balmy 36 degrees here in the greater DFW area. Uh, in an effort to be more sensitive, I chose to wear pink today for today's Q&A. Hoping that you love it. Uh, love the questions I've been getting. And uh, if you want to submit questions to me, you can submit them right here on Instagram, or you can send them to Wally at phonesalesecrets.com. But uh, let's get right into it. First question, how does your coaching approach differ from traditional sales training and what sets it apart in terms of effectiveness? Love what you're doing, man. Thank you so much. So look, here's the deal. You know, the people that I coach are self-employed, largely, majority of them. And so, you know, there's usually lots of crossover between real life and the business, lots of personal stuff that comes up. So. The thing is, is when I coach people, I make sure that they get the support they need, not just on their business stuff, but also on their personal stuff, right? I've been through a lot in my life. I've made a lot of bad choices, a lot of bad decisions, screwed up a lot of things. And so I can add perspective to people to help them avoid challenges and problems and issues that come up when they don't strike the right amount of balance in their life. And so I actually, you know, I do some some traditional, you know, uh, I don't wanna say therapy, but I help people work through some personal problems that can help improve not just their business, but also their marriages and their relationships. And so, you know, in addition to adding as much value as I can on helping them become super successful as a business person and a salesperson, I can also leverage my experiences in life and bring those to people to help them have an even better quality of life personally. And, you know, that old saying, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Well, if things are good at home, your business are, are, is automatically going to do a whole lot better. So we cover both sides of the spectrum when we coach people and we talk, work on business and personal stuff at the same time. <clears throat> Number two, can you explain the difference between sales reluctance and a lack of sales skills? I don't know if I'm just unskilled or if there's something deeper going on. Okay, great question. So there's two kinds of call reluctance or sales call reluctance. The first one is due to lack of, of, of sales skills, not knowing what to say, when to say it and how to say it not having your scripts and dialogues down, not understanding the value you bring to the table, and you know, really not being able to take people in the direction you wanna take them confidently. And so that lack of certainty can cause call reluctance, but in my experience, the people that jump in with both feet and work hard and practice and are, not, are, are willing to kind of, you know, for lack of a better terminology, get their teeth kicked in a little bit, they're gonna be fine. And it doesn't take that long to overcome it. And the great thing is, especially if you're working with buyers in real estate, you know, you can get business going pretty quickly because, you know, the bar to entry to working with a buyer is not as high as it is, say, working with a seller or even a commercial deal. Now, true, like dyed in the wool call reluctance that a lot of folks have has to do with emotional challenges, has to do with hidden identities, the things that they believe to be true or not true about what they can do. And that's deep inside, we call those hidden identities, right? And uh, these things are caused by challenges we had as a child, usually between the ages of you know being born, one right around that time and the time they're 12. Little uh, tidbit here, most of our belief system and our personality is formed by the time we're seven, okay? Things do change and impact that over time, but you know, by the time we're seven, eight years old, a lot of who we are at, the, at our core is gonna be that way. And so if you had something traumatic happen to you, physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, if you were bullied, um, if you were poor, if uh, your parents fought all the time, if your parents never fought, um, you know, you had something traumatic happen, somebody died that you knew, it, it doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is if something happened to you when you were younger and uh, you were, you know, uh, impacted negatively, it probably triggered your your fight or flight response, most likely flight. And then as you grew older, you just avoided things, especially things that triggered you uh, that were negative and essentially it grew within you this desire to not put yourself in situations where you could be hurt or rejected or not liked. And so that's what causes, um, you know, the legit call reluctance. You know, they're both call reluctance, but the, the emotional one is the one that about 60% of salespeople have. Uh, see my girl, Emma Jean there? Dad loves you. Number three, how do you help your clients identify their unique strengths and weaknesses in sales? I'm not sure what my strengths are. So, you know, a lot of times, well, almost every time I have somebody take a, a DISC personality test, it's not the end all be all. And um, for those of you that are looking for a really, really good sales person analysis strategy and assessment, you can go check out Objective Management Group. My boy Dave Curlin has an amazing program he's had for 30 years. He's got some stuff that'll tell you everything you need to know about salespeople and, and about 27 different characteristics. But first, if you look at your at your DISC personality test, that'll at least tell you a little bit about how you're wired, if that makes any sense. You know, D stands for dominance. Usually outgoing people tend not to get their feelings hurt. 
too easily. Don't worry so much about hurting other people's feelings. The I stands for influence and, 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 and really image conscious people, very, very much people, people want to get along with people, can get their feelings hurt, don't want to hurt other people's feelings. S stands for steadiness, right? And those people uh, historically are very utilitarian in nature. They want what's fair for everybody and um, <clears throat> tend to also be people, people and don't want to get their feelings hurt or hurt anybody else's feelings. And the C stands for conscientiousness, sometimes caution or concern. You know, those folks are uh, very detail oriented and uh, really, you know, for them, the details matter, also very introverted, okay? So historically, good salespeople have a lot of D&I in them, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee they're gonna be good salespeople. But I think if you look at your personality first and see what your personality is, that'll tell you what some of your, uh, your proclivities are, some of the things you're more <clears throat> aligned with and how you're wired. That said, you know, if you look at what makes a good salesperson, you know, anybody can be a good salesperson because it takes persistence it takes a willingness to implement. It takes being coachable. But really what it takes is, is a willingness to go ahead and, and, and step out on the limb and and, and, uh, and ask some people some questions so you can learn what you need to learn about them to make the decision if they're gonna be a good a good client or not. Okay, so anybody can be a good salesperson. Um, and you know, I think your unique strengths, if they're in detail, orientation or in introversion, they may not inure themselves to being a good salesperson, but I think anybody can be a good salesperson if they're willing to do the things that salespeople do, which is pick up the phone and prospect, talk to people, do good qualification, ask the hard questions, make recommendations, do trial closes, and really put, like I said, put yourself out there and say the things and do the things necessary to create a sales uh, scenario for yourself. Anyway, those are my three questions for the week. Appreciate all of you who stopped by to say hello. Again, if you want to submit a question, send it to Wally at Phone Sales Secrets, or you can go ahead and put it right here. I'm always happy to answer questions, and um, be kind to yourselves. Talk to you soon.